The BTCC is back. This Sunday. And needless to say, I am quite the excite. Now if you've been around this channel longer than say, some minutes, you'll know that despite me covering mostly F1 stuff, whether it's F1 history or F1 reviews and reactions, I absolutely love the BTCC. Whether it's the crash bang wallop of the fabled super touring era to the somewhat neutered crash bang wallop of the current NGTC era, which despite not being super touring, has managed to rekindle some of that super touring magic. It's close, it's tight, and even though the names in the series aren't exactly on par with the likes of Michael Schumacher or Dale Earnhardt, the BTCC is in the hearts of almost every British motorsport fan. So with that, here's a handy cutout and keep bandwagoners guide to everyone's favourite saloon car racing series. And here's the thing, you don't have to be that knowledgeable or that much of a motorsport fanatic to enjoy it. So firstly we'll talk about the cars. They are, for all intents and purposes, highly modified road cars but done in a much more tasteful way than Dino from the estate's 2004 Vauxhall Corsa that looks like he's just crashed it through Halfords. And unlike in Germany, where the cars resemble the Japanese Super GT cars before the switch to GT3 this season, the cars in the BTCC resemble the sort of vehicles you would see on the roads anywhere in the UK. The rule is, so long as that car is available for sale in a main dealer network, it can be used, and it has to be a flagship model or has to be a vehicle anybody can buy. For want of a better phrase, no homologation specials. And despite the 300 horsepower engines, the body kits and the roll cages, each car is identifiable from a distance, and each car brings its own distinct road car shape to the track. And these cars are powered by a 300 horsepower, 2 litre, turbocharged direct injection engine, and that can be built by the manufacturers. There is also an off the shelf engine built by Toka, the sports governing body, for the privateer teams that want to save a bit of cash over the season. Then for 2022, the BTCC will introduce a spec hybrid engine that will be given to all the teams. These engines are then mated to an X-Track 6-speed lever sequential. Each car runs the same AP racing carbon clutch, and the drivetrain can either be front-wheel drive, which is basically a tradition in the BTCC, or they could be rear-wheel drive. Which is which? Well, every car except the BMW 330i M Sport, BMW 130i M Sport, and the Infiniti Q50 GT are front-wheel drive. Previously, the Subaru Lavorg was also rear-wheel drive. And speaking of the Lavorg, saloon, hatchback and estate body styles are allowed, but it must be a two, three or five door with a minimum length of four and a half meters, and the three doors must share the basic body profile of the five door models. This is what I mean about not needing to be a motorsport fanatic or having an engineering degree to watch it. Compared to Formula One, this is as basic as it can be. Next up, the tracks. 10 race weekends around the UK, and by that I mean 9 race weekends in England and 1 in Scotland. 8 venues in all, with Brands Hatch in Kent hosting a round on the Grand Prix and the Indy circuit. Then there's Thruxton in Hampshire, which is the fastest track in the UK, with BTCC cars hitting about 150 miles an hour at the fastest point. Up next is Snetterton in Norfolk, the former home of the Lotus Formula 1 team, where the 300 layout hosts the longest laps of the year. Then it's the home of British Motorsport, with Silverstone joining brands in hosting races on two different layouts, using both the new and the old F1 pit lanes. Up the M40 towards Donington Park near Derby, which is my home race, if you will, being about a 45-50 minute drive from just outside of Birmingham. And then taking things up to Cheshire, where Alton Park's Island Circuit sees one of the tightest hairpins you'll find anywhere. Then it's the long trek all the way up to Teesside in the northeast, where the old RAF Croft presents its fast sweeping corners and a hairpin that rivals Alton's. And then finally, up near Fife in Scotland, is the tricky triangle. It's not Pocono, it's Knockhill. It's also the shortest lap on the calendar and the only track in Britain that runs both ways. On those circuits is where the racing, biffing, barging and punting happens, and three races are held on the Sunday of each weekend. And just like in Formula 1, there is only one qualifying session held on the Saturday which decides the grid for race 1, which is a sprint race of about 25 minutes to just over half an hour depending on wet weather or safety cars. Has to be said that when a safety car is called, the race organisers can and will add some extra laps to a limit to ensure a full race distance. Why that rule is in effect, I'd like someone to answer. I think it's to stop drivers thinking they've not got much time left to get past and then cause another safety car but that's a more advanced rule than not something you really need to know to get started. 
Typically, all that will be explained on the commentary by the brilliant David Addison and Tim Harvey. But once race 1 is completed, the finishing order of the race decides the grid for race 2, and the success ballast is moved around. Success ballast serves two purposes. One, it means drivers have to learn to drive around the extra weight to go quickly, and it allows the field to be closer together in every race. It also, to an extent, allows the cream to rise to the top. Or it just annoys viewers because let them race slash my favourite driver is being slowed down. And they've tweaked this rule for 2021. It used to be first down to 10th, 60 kilos to 6 on a scale of 6 kilos per position. That's now been changed to 75 kilos for the winner, down to 9 kilos for 10th. Again, not sure why they changed it, but last season the Infinity in the hands of Ash Sutton was very good at lugging that extra weight around. The only race where nobody runs any ballast is the very first race of the season. After that, it's applied to those who finished in the top 10 in each race, and then the top 10 in the driver's standings carry the weight to next weekend's Race 1. And while the finish of Race 1 determines the grid for Race 2, the results of Race 2 are only guaranteed locked in from 13th down to the back because 6th down to 12th enter the reverse grid draw. Whoever's finishing position is pulled out of the hat gets onto pole for race 3, and then it's reversed from that position that's selected, all the way up to 1st. And I'll pop a handy graphic up so you can see it explained visually, and in this example we're going to assume that 8th place, Josh Cook, is the one getting pole. Then after each race, points are handed out. 20 for the winner, down to 1 point for 15th place. But drivers can bag an extra point for leading a lap, getting the fastest lap as in Formula 1, and they get one extra point for leading a lap, but you can only get one point per lap led, as it were. And this can result in some epic season finales that we've seen at Brands Hatch in the past, particularly 2019. And now onto the drivers. Who should you support? Well Colin Turkington and Tom Ingram, because they're Zancho drivers, naturally. But I shouldn't really tell you who to support, that should be something that you gravitate towards. If you watch Formula 1 and you like Max Verstappen, you'd probably like Ash Sutton. If you value consistency in the same vein as someone like Alain Prost, you'd probably be interested in Colin Turkington, and those two are likely to be the two championship protagonists again this year. Jason Plato is a member of the old guard, a bit like Kimi Raikkonen, and Rory Butcher is a dark horse if you're into that sort of thing. The best thing to do is to watch some stuff on YouTube to get a feel, and if you're outside of the UK it can be difficult to follow, I'll admit, but if you are in the UK, the whole thing will be shown live and uncut on ITV4. The three BTCC races plus the support races all live from like 10am through to 6 o'clock in the evening. My wife and I will make a day of it. Yeah, we watch the whole thing. It's brilliant. And if you are put off by the lack of star power, Lewis Hamilton's brother is in it. So this has been a brief intro to what I reckon at least is the closest, most competitive circuit racing championship anywhere. If you've learned something new here today, then be sure to like the video, and for more stuff like this, hit subscribe with the bell on to get notified of any future videos. Massive thanks as always goes out to the patrons of this channel via Patreon, and if you wish to join them, join the Discord, or even join the Community Fantasy BTCC League, then all the links will be in the description box for you. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward, have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.